I'm the wine and on this channel we talk about what it's like to be an expat in Ireland and we've been here now for four years and we do a lot of videos about different aspects so do make sure to subscribe and check out our past videos but today the topic I wanted to talk about specifically is what is it like to move to Ireland as an EU citizen because there are some nuances that are a little bit different so I want to go into a few aspects that are easier than for people from other countries, some aspects that stay the same and that might be underestimated by EU citizens, and then I just want to talk about some general things to consider if you're moving from one EU country to Ireland. So first of all, let's talk about the barriers that are much lower for EU citizens to come and move to Ireland than for people from other countries. So obviously as an EU citizen, so for example I am Austrian, and an EU citizen so I can come to Ireland like I did and just pretty much start a job here, move here for whatever amount of time I want to. So obviously that makes it a lot, of e a lot easier because there are a lot of people struggling with work visas to make the dream of moving to Ireland come true. And to be fair, Europe in comparison to other continents is pretty small so if you're flying from Austria to Ireland for example, that's like two and a half hours or something, like in other countries that doesn't even get you outside the country. So you are pretty close to home whenever you feel homesick or something. You could probably go on a weekend trip to see your friends for an important birthday or something. And also it is relatively cheap to just be like, okay, no, this is not what I expected. I don't like it. I want to go back home. You could just pack up your bags and leave pretty easily because it's just a relatively short flight to hop on to get back home. However, there are also some barriers that are just as difficult as for other people who are moving to Ireland and I think those are some barriers that are often a bit underestimated by people coming from EU places. So first of all is moving to Ireland is expensive, moving to any country is expensive but also moving to Ireland is expensive because the cost of living is quite high, especially if you're looking to move to a country like Dublin. So you do probably, coming from the EU, have the advantage of having the same currency. So at least you're not losing any of your savings in currency exchange fees and different rates and all of that stuff. But it's, it's still, it's gonna take a chunk out of your savings to come here while you're looking for accommodation, rent prices are quite high. And I think as EU citizens, thinking of EU countries more or less like the same a lot of the time. You come maybe from one country like Austria where rents are pretty low in comparison and you expect sort of similar rates in Dublin and then you come here and you realize like the flat that we live in which would be considered like a single person's flat in Vienna has like we pay the rent that will get you like probably like a two three bedroom flat in Vienna like a really new and nice one. So what also makes it expensive to move is that it can take a while for you to get your salary. So you do have the advantage as an EU citizen is pretty much that you just show up to whatever work you have, you show your passport and basically it being an EU passport is all the work permits that you need. And you can get the whole process started of getting like the PPSN number, which is basically a social security number and all those different things, opening a bank account, all the bureaucracy that you need to actually receive your salary. So sure, you do have a little bit of advantage there that you don't need to go through extra steps that people coming from outside the EU need to take. But at the same time, it still can be a lengthy process. And at the end of the day, what happened to me, for example, is that it was actually after two months of working, I got the full salary paid out because simply the, all the bureaucratic steps didn't line up fast enough, even with all the advantage and being on top of when to get all my, my forms and appointments and everything done that the first month I was emergency taxed and just given a check for my first salary. So first of all, the salary was a lot lower and also I didn't have a bank account yet to get to that money. So it was only after the second salary I got paid out while I was missing from the first salary and my actual second month's salary paid out into my bank account that it started balancing out our cash flow. So that's also a big thing to consider when you move that it's not like you're making, starting making money like that instantly, it can have a bit of delay and that's a disadvantage you also have to deal with 
as an EU citizen because usually companies only pay out the salaries to Irish bank accounts. Another area where EU citizens do have an advantage, but it can also be harder than you might think, is finding jobs. So of course as an EU citizen you certainly do have an advantage over people applying, especially from outside of Ireland for jobs. And sure, to some companies who are uncomfortable with going through the whole visa bureaucracy process because they've never done it before or they're unsure of the cost or just sort of too scared to do it. And with those companies, obviously, as an EU citizen, you do have the advantage that they don't need to do anything to hire you other than look at your passport to check that you're eligible to work in Ireland. So you do have an advantage there, but at the same time, you're still competing in the same job market. And for a lot of the big companies, it still comes down to your skills because bigger companies will be used to issuing work visas and going through that whole process. And at that level, they're basically just looking at your skills and your work experience. So a small advantage you may have is if you speak European languages, because there are a lot of sort of the operations back offices of big companies in Ireland where they are looking for sales, support, any sort of roles where you would be in direct contact with clients within European countries. So in those instances, having that language would certainly give you that certain advantage to get a job like that, especially because a lot of these jobs are just generally like sales, support, sort of customer, facing roles generally tends to have a very high churn rate, especially in Dublin. So because a lot of people are leaving, they're always looking for people to start a job. So that is probably an area where I have a very easy time comparatively to find a job if you speak certain languages. But the, at the end of the day, it depends on whether that is a job you would like to do versus another career you want to get into where you are competing with a very competitive job market. So finally, I also wanted to talk about three aspects that I feel like don't necessarily get thought about much by some people moving from EU countries. I admit I didn't think about them or I had, was a bit shocked about them myself because when I received a job offer for a job in Ireland, I didn't think too much. <laughs> well, I didn't, not that we didn't think too much about moving here, but it was like, well, it's an opportunity, we can always go back home if we decide we don't like it, so why not Why not try it out? Like That is certainly the advantage for someone from the EU, that if you have savings saved up and you feel like it is a work experience, even if it's just for a few months or a year, it's work experience that's going to add to your CV, you can take that risk of maybe finding out later that you don't like the place or it takes you longer to settle into because you, you have relatively little risk and there's always sort of the plan B that it is relatively easy to move back home and just leave and do whatever else you want to move to another EU country. So first of all, with these three things to consider, the first thing, which I think is something that people do consider because it's probably something that attracts people to Ireland as well, is that the tax rates are relatively low. And by relatively low, I mean that I come from Austria where the tax rate is like 40% of your income, which is a massive amount. That's like almost half your salary going to tax. Versus when you come here and for a certain amount of your income, you just rate taxed at a rate of 20%. So that is a massively bigger amount of your salary that you can to keep. So at first glance, you're like, wow, I just moved to Ireland. I'll be rich with the same salary. Except living costs are also massively higher here. So it balances out at the end of the day, but you do have more leeway to try and optimize your spending, where you rent a flat, how you live, to try and at the end of the day, kind of have more savings than maybe you would have in another place where the income wasn't as big to begin with. The second thing to consider is, and I admit that was one of the things that I naively assumed was the same in all EU countries and looking back that that seems quite naive to have been thinking like that but it's about healthcare. So in Austria healthcare is pretty much free so sure you have like your private services and obviously there's a big 
gap of when you need certain things done quickly, you can go private, or for some special stuff you have to go private and it'll be faster, but you have to pay for it. But in general, in theory, you can get more or less everything for free. So if you go to the GP, it's free. Now, in Ireland, going to the GP costs you 60 euro. And that was a big shock to me because 60 euro seems like a huge amount to me, or at least back then it did, to go see a GP. Right now, I'm used to it, but I do see the effect it has on people where people will really avoid going to the GP or they'd rather go to work sick so they don't have to go to the doctors to get the, like, the notice saying that you're sick and you can't come to work simply because it costs that much money to do that and they want to avoid doing that. There are of course also Ireland's more advanced than with online doctors so you have kind of like have a video call or you can phone a, a doctor or something and that'll be cheaper but it, it is still for me it was a big adjustment and also talking to a lot of people from EU countries that took their free health care for granted it's quite a bit shocking and a big shift in thinking or also in how you manage your money because healthcare is one of those things where you might need a lot of health care very quickly but it's not something you necessarily plan for and also one cost I totally didn't plan for originally was to get private health insurance which is something that some companies do offer as a benefit but it's certainly not all companies but it's something that personally when I was looking for jobs that was kind of a criteria I was looking for because what I realized is that company plans are often better than the plans you can get as a private person and even if you have to pay your own money into it while well, you're on probation or something or to put your partner on the plan they're often tend to be better value for money because you pay less because you're in like a group scheme but at the end of the day you're probably getting more out of it so that's something that originally moving to Ireland would have never occurred to me to consider even be thinking about what do I need in my health insurance all this kind of stuff so that is some, definitely something to think about if you do have maybe certain healthcare needs um, to do a little bit of research before you decide to move to Ireland and the third thing I wanted to talk about is language. So obviously the language in Ireland is English unless you're in a, and I'm gonna butcher this, like Geltacht area. Basically an area where, where um, Irish is still commonly spoken so it would be more of a probably bilingual or more Irish area. But mostly you're probably, if you're moving to a city, you're gonna be in an English speaking area. Now the EU, well, now more or less minus the UK, pretty much Ireland is the only English speaking country if you don't count also Malta. So yeah, you're probably moving to a country where people don't speak the language you're used to speaking at home. So it's a language you only learned in school and that can be quite scary. So the, I think a lot of experts that we get on this channel are actually English native speakers. So we get people from the US, we get people from countries where English is maybe not the first native language, so they maybe speak other languages first, but they also use it commonly like in everyday life, so it is like a, a native language, even if they only started learning it in school. So you are, in a way, if you come from the EU, competing with people who are that used to speaking English, and that can be a bit intimidating, I know. I, I have a bachelor's in English. I lived for a year in London doing nothing but speak English because I didn't know any German speakers there. And I admit, I was still a bit nervous moving to Ireland and actually working, like speaking fully English all the time. Of course, ironically, I then ended up in a German team where I spoke more German than English. <laughs> but it can be a bit intimidating at first. And I do think it can be something where a lot of people from the EU either they think it's gonna be, oh, like, I've watched a lot of BBC series, like, I can understand that fine. And then they come here and they're like, well, no one sounds like people on BBC here, which is like, yeah, because BBC is a British channel. Ireland is a very different country when it comes to how the, the accents work. And you have each area, 
even like a little neighborhood can have or a little village can have its own particular accent there are a lot of words that are unique to Ireland and it can take you a while to get into just how small talk works the all the different phrases um, but it is something you can get used to and I think what people who are quite intimidated by the idea of moving to an English-speaking country what they don't realize is that is a adjustment you need to make even as a native speaker because the Rum, who's not in this video, but if you watch the other videos, you know he's from Barbados, so he's from an English speaking country. But at the same time, sometimes we both in the first few weeks be here talking to someone who is Irish and they'd be saying something, and we both be like, mm hmm, mm hmm, and then they, the person walks away and we look to each other and they're like, did you understand what he was saying? And he'd be like, no, did you? And it's like, <laughs> it, it takes some adjustments to just get an ear for the for the accent and to get used to certain phrases and how they're meant and to get into the banter and how small talk works and to understand the Irish sense of humor a bit better. But that's an adjustment you need to make as a native speaker or a non-native speaker. So sure, it's good if you're nervous about speaking English to maybe come here on holiday or do a sort of um, language school first, to maybe come here for a few weeks, do a language course where you look for jobs or just try and get used to the place or even if you know you're starting a job in a month maybe make sure to come already the month before just to put yourself in situations talking to people, going to the shops, all those things to get into the habit of speaking English and getting comfortable and confident with it So yeah, I've bubbled on long enough about the different things to consider in you want to move to Ireland, we do have an entire course about it with a lot more information than I just talked about in this video so do check it out in the links below and make sure to subscribe and check out other videos where we talk a lot about what it's like to be an expert in Ireland and let us know in the comments if you have any other questions. Bye!